alaikum and welcome back to the Today Show with me, your host Ayyub. Now, next up, we have Islam Udin, and he's the head of Community England Fundraising at Muslim Charity. He's been working with charities for over 20 years and has worked with some of the largest Muslim charities in the UK and, of course, a lot more smaller ones. And he's very, very passionate about humanitarian causes. He's worked on projects in many, many countries around the world. And he is here to join us uh, with me on the sofa. So, Assalamu alaikum, Islam Udin. Um, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us on, on the Today Show to talk about this. Now, Muslim uh, charity raises funds in you know rather a very unique way because you do a lot of events and of course challenges. Um, often when we think about charities, um, you know we, we think about just kind of just donating um, mm -hmm. quite simply. But um, this sounds like you know there's a lot of creative element, you know getting communities together, etc. Um, for example, skydiving, um, I heard you recently did. Tell us more about that. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, Muslim Charity um, fundraises in many different uh, ways. And one of those is through the events and challenges that we have. Um, the challenges range from walks, something as simple as walking, to jumping out of a plane, uh, which you just mentioned. Um, so last May, I um, jumped out of a plane at 12,000 feet. <laughs> This is something that I'd never... <coughs> yeah. It was simple. It was very simple, <laughs> uh, It's something that I'd never really been interested in yeah. um, until I started talking to some of our uh, donors and, and uh, participants who take mm -hmm. part in the various challenges. And as a way to encourage some of our younger uh, supporters, I signed up for uh, the skydive. Uh, and alhamdulillah, um, it wasn't as difficult as I was expecting it to be. Um, and, and I loved it. Well, I we have footage of this, so let's shall. take a look and see how you reacted to the skydiving. Did you really like it? You looked um, very relaxed. Um, I've done skydiving before, and I was terrified. <laughs> How did you keep that relaxed, um, you know, mindset? And why um, were you so excited? <laughs> right. So I was expecting the nerves to hit as we were <clears throat> um, getting ready to get on the plane, or as the plane started moving. But somehow, um, I was really, really calm. Even to the point when we sat at the 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 door. Uh, just you can see just yeah. just getting ready to oh jump gosh. just getting ready to jump you're about to jump you look so excited you're smiling and then you just basically just lean forward and just start falling oh gosh <laughs> and um, this was in the uk um where was this in the uk this was uh in lancashire in, in lancashire in, in northern, northern, it's got some beautiful in, views there we can see although you could see uh Hold morecambe bay and and uh, the lake district uh, from wow there. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, the first, I think, one minute or 30 seconds is, um, you know... Free-falling. Free-falling. Yes. Was that terrifying or not really? Uh, for me, I think it was about the first second, second when you just start falling. And then after that, the wind is rushing past you and it's really noisy and you can't yeah. really yeah. do anything. But then when the chute opens, everything is dead calm. There's mm. no noise mm. and it's almost like well, you are floating. Mm. through the air um, and it's one of the most serene experiences I've, I've had um, and for me that was the best part just floating in the air and, and just looking out and, and, and yeah. seeing the the world around you um, it was amazing and I recommend it to everybody it's just skydiving um, for our viewers watching at home <coughs> so um, you know go check it out it's nothing yeah. it's it's very simple no honestly this is um 
a very unique way of, of, of course, raising charity. Um, was this one of your most kind of um, adrenaline, adrenaline crazy uh, projects or is there, is there more to come? No, in terms of adrenaline spikes, I think this was up there. This was up there. there. But we, we do a lot more. Uh, as I said, we, we organise um, walks. Uh, we did a recent London Bridges walk where mm, we just walked mm, along mm. zigzagging all the bridges um, <laughs> from Tower Bridge to uh, Westminster. Um, and then at the other end of the scale, we do things like the K2 base camp trek. Uh, K2, for yep. uh, those who are not familiar, is the second tallest mountain in the world after Everest. We don't climb it. That's crazy. <laughs> um, we just <laughs> go to the base camp. Right? Yeah. But it takes a week's hiking from the last village to get to the base camp. So you're camping out uh, for, th for five of those days. You're, you're sleeping on a glacier. You're sleeping wow. on ice. Wow. And base camp is at 5,150 meters. Mm -hmm. uh, to put that in perspective, the tallest mountain in the UK is Ben Nevis. Mm -hmm. uh, and that summit's at 1,350 odd meters. So the base of K2 is almost uh, over four times as high as... So, so Nevis. many, so many challenges. You had another challenge which you did in Pakistan. Tell us more about that. Um, we do quite a few, but I think you're talking about the rickshaw challenge. Yes. This is one of, yes. one of my favourite challenges that we do. We, we get people to raise money to buy a rickshaw, an auto rickshaw, for a poor family in, in Pakistan. Um, but what we do is we, we get teams of twos and threes to raise the money, and then we take them out to Pakistan. Mm. We teach them how to drive the rickshaw, and then for four or five days, the participants, the fundraisers, they drive the rickshaws across different parts of Pakistan, and at the end, we hand over the keys to a poor family, who then use it as a means of income. Well, we've got another video. Let's take a look. Riksha <laughs> challenge day one here in Ankara Sahib, heading off to Faisalabad. They're all geared up for this one. So hopefully we're just going to pick up the speed and just get through it. We are learning our driving skills progressively. It's going to be a long job yet. This challenge is more special because it's uh, an experience I'm having with my mother. Day three of the Ripsy Challenge. This is the time we've been waiting for. Really looking forward to it and uh, let's see how this journey goes. Quite a tough day, it was 36 degrees. Perfect for us on this long and hot journey today. This is day four, Sahiwal to Kaniwal. Wow, so, so very much, you know, event for all these um, challenges and things like that. And uh, for this challenge, what project um, were you raising for? Uh, this one uh, in Pakistan, we were raising um, for homes that we were building, mm. uh, providing uh, rebuild homes for people who lost them in the floods um, the previous year. Um, we we're also supporting children's projects that we run in, in Pakistan. One of these is uh, rescuing children who are living on the streets, mm -hmm. um, providing them care, trying to reunite them with any family that, that they may have. Um, but there's, there's a whole range of projects um, that we uh, support and, and of course uh, income generation for poor families uh, through the actual rickshaws themselves. And these challenges, um, are they there to kind of what just get people on board? Um, is it more difficult to raise charity when it's just plain and just going on long walks? I mean some people like long walks but yes. I don't but okay. Um, is, is this just more enticing to people kind of donating and really regenerating a lot of these projects? Yeah, so obviously different things appeal to different people. And some people are happy to just sit and, at home and, and, and give money. But what we're finding more and more is that people want to do a bit more than just mm. press a few buttons and, and pay some money. Uh, you want to charity. feel like you're immersing yourself. Absolutely. And, and with these, you, mm. you're not only giving uh, money, you're also physically, actively uh, exerting yourself. Um, and that adds to the sense of, um, so what's the, what am I looking for? Um, the fulfillment that you get mm -hmm. from um, giving your money and sweating to, mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. um, 
those in need. <coughs> you had another amazing challenge. And by the way, the list is endless because this is what um, you do as a charity. Let's take a look at th this final challenge. phenomenal views um, from, from that challenge then. It's certainly, I think it gets people to, um, you know, want to work hard to, uh, you know, give back and feel like they are actually giving back, not just uh, by donating, but tell us more about the community feel, because I imagine, you know, you're in groups, um, yep. you meet new people. Uh, what's that like? And uh, what are the benefits of uh, just getting out there and being social? I think that's one of the, the key attractions for these challenges that we do is meeting other people, mm. uh, like minded people. Um, and as you got a little bit of it from the videos there, but people really do enjoy uh, yeah. these activities. And, and you don't just meet fellow participants, but you also go and see the people that we're helping. So you saw uh, in, in that last clip, um, the participants visiting a school, mm. uh, which we support, um, for which we're fundraising through this project. We also take people to show them some of the, like the natural beauty of the country. So in Pakistan and in Bangladesh, um, you, there were shots of uh, some of the scenery, uh, the, the river boat uh, that we went through. Uh, some of these things people normally wouldn't go. So a lot of Bengalis, when they go back to Bangladesh, they don't really go to a lot of these places. Same in Pakistan. Mm. Uh, it's a huge country. People usually tend to go to just over their hometowns or, or localities. Um, but it's a way for us to show people the beauty of our countries back home. Um, as well as the work that we do, so people can see for themselves where their money is going. And I think that's another key attraction, where, you can, where you're raising money, but then you're able to see exactly where it is going and, and interact with the beneficiaries. So go and talk to the people mm -hmm. who are receiving the rickshaws or the, the children in the schools that we're supporting. Is there an age limit to these um, you know, events? Like I imagine the skydiving, I wouldn't get my, my mum to jump out of a plane. Um, I'm 50, I, I did it. Okay. Um, <laughs> We, there is a lower age limit, but there's no upper age limit. Um, in the Pakistan Rickshaw Challenge, you saw one of my friends who went with his mother for the, for the Rickshaw Challenge. Um, they're open to anybody and everybody, really, uh, whoever uh, uh, feels that they're able to. Obviously, for something like, like the, the K2 base camp trek, mm -hmm. it's a three-week trek, we do ask you to get medical advice before you start that. Um, but six, anybody 16 uh, and over can take part in most, there are some that are open to families. Uh, for example, the uh, walks and hikes that we do mm -hmm. around, around the UK, mm -hmm. uh, we do encourage um, families to come around along with children because that's another key area that the charity is looking at. These events and challenges are not just to raise money for our projects abroad, but to encourage people to get out and exercise and l lead healthier lifestyles. Yeah. Uh, well, um, you, you're, you're definitely inspiring um, people like myself because when I um, did skydiving, I was absolutely terrified and I'm not sure I, will, I would do it again. But um, tell us how people can find out more about these um, challenges. Um, as long as it's not skydiving, I might consider joining you guys, inshallah. But tell inshallah. us more. Um, you can get all the information on Muslim Charities' website if you go to yep. muslimcharity.org.uk slash events. Mm -hmm. All of the, the events that we have currently planned are there. Uh, plus we've got uh, a whole bunch of other events that are coming up uh, over the next 12 months, inshallah. Islamuddin, thank you so much for telling us about your um, eventful um, you know, charity work and um, do check out Muslim Charity if you are adventurous and would like to give back um, for, for really good causes. So look, we're gonna go for another short break, but uh, we will be right back. <laughs> 